has chased them down. Lars has been a motorhead groupie forever. I mean, he learned a lot about rock and roll, the business, uh, how you traveled, all of that stuff by following Motorhead around. And uh, remember we chased him down in, in Hollywood one time and uh, it's like a kind of a pretty normal motel kind of place in nice sunny Southern California. And we walk in and, you know, I, it was just like how I see kids' faces when they see me. It was like, holy shit. There he is, you know, and you're not real quiet about it. You know, it's like, dude, it's him, it's him, you know, and uh, okay, be cool, be cool, be cool, man, you know. And meanwhile, I'm sure Lemmy's radar is like, mm, okay, you know, dorky fans over here, here we go. And uh, you know, we walk over, hey, can we get your autograph? You know, he's, they're they're swimming, Motorhead swimming in a pool, but they're still signing autographs. You know, they even swim together. <laughs> I went to the Rainbow with my girlfriend one night, and we were sitting at the table, and uh, I got up and went to go take a piss. And I came back, and Lemmy was sitting in the booth with my girlfriend chatting her up, right? And so I came to the table, and I was just, that, this was the first time we ever met. This actually the first time we ever met. Of course, he had no idea who I was. I mean, Guns N' Roses hadn't become a, I don't even think we'd even gotten together at that point. Maybe, whatever, it was way early on. and. Uh, so I sat down, Lemmy's here, she's here, and so I sat down next to her, and I was just, I was starstruck. And so he, once I came in, you know, three years of crowd, Lemmy finally got up and, and left. And so my girlfriend's like, why didn't you say something? I said, are you kidding? Do you know who that was? <laughs> that was my first time meeting Lemmy. I get the call that he wants to have a meeting one day. I'm like, yeah, sure. Walk in the front door, and uh, walk in and you know, it's just World War II shit from floor to ceiling, the whole apartment. I, I can't even see Lemmy yet. There's stuff stacked in piles and magazines and books and stuff like that. So I walk in the living room and there's Lemmy sitting there in his underwear, nothing else, doing a phoner, smoking cigarettes, he's got an ashtray in front of him, piled this high with smokes. It's noon, he sort of looks at me like, all right, man, as he keeps on doing his thing and then, uh, He's like, hey, how are you? And I mean, you know, growing up, looking up to this guy, like, how could the dude get any more badass than he already is? And there he is with a bottle of Jack next to him, just out of the shower in his underwear, nothing else. Like, you want a drink? And I'm like, yeah, I'll have a drink. And we sat on that couch for like four hours and listened to Peter Sellers records and Monty Python records and Motorhead records. I don't even know what the meeting was for. And so we, I, you know, get back in my car and I kind of sat there before I started the car like, damn, did that just really happen? That's like, to me, that's like, that's like sitting with the Pope naked or something like that. Like, I never imagined that dude with his robe off, you know? There's that story of, uh, there was a Monsters of Rock tour and all these big bands were on the bill and there was this one <laughs> five day stretch of like complete debauchery. And, you know, these cats and some of these young bands and even the veteran bands were trying to keep up with Lemmy, you know, with his, you know, sheer intake of substances, his lack of the need for sleep, his, his ability to rock and roll and party and, and, you know, get laid, whatever it was. And uh, at the end of the five days, these guys are like, you know, he didn't sleep at all and he's just still just, you know... He's just Lemmy, you know what I mean? He's never, you never see him stumble, you never see him like falter on his words. He's always eloquent when he speaks. Ozzy goes up to him and, and like, you know, with his eyes down to hear him and he goes, Lemmy, what, you know, what the fuck, man? <laughs> you know, what, what do you, how do you do it? Five days, no sleep and, and all this stuff. And Lemmy just looks at him and goes, after a while, you just coast. A coast! I'd be fucking screaming through bars as they drove me away, you know. He came to Sharon, Sharon's father had his house, it was on, it was built by Howard Hughes. And we'd been on a roll, a roll I mean, he was doing that in 1982 with me. And he, he got to the house, we had a couple of days off. I was doing one coke and he was doing fucking, or whatever the fuck he was doing. And I was feeling really fucking rough. I was like, fuck this, I've got to get some summer sleep for about a couple of days now. 
a couple of days go by, and we got to go for the gig, you know. And uh, Lemmy said to me, fuck, you know, you look... He comes out of the house, he looked like a ghost. He'd been in the house, cos Sharon used to have a bungalow and away from the main house, and Lemmy was in the water library, as usual, reading fucking every book he could get hold of. He comes out and he, he, he looks ashen face and he... Oh, I think, fuck, you know. And he goes, he looks at me and he goes, I hope I don't look as bad as you do. I go, if he's saying that to me, I must be fucking th three seconds from death. I remember coming out of my hotel room, it's one of the first days of the tour, and uh, I see Lemmy, <laughs> it looked a little rough, hungover, and he's standing next to an elevator, waiting to get on the elevator, smoking a cigarette, with, with white shorts on, no shirt, white shorts on, and white cowboy boots, and a cowboy hat. And he's, he's like going, he went out to get ice or something for a Jack and Coke at like 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> something like that. And... I remember being on tour with Ozzy, and it was summer, and it was probably back in 96. Lemmy's out there catching some sun rays. He's wearing a banana hammock, and he doesn't care who's watching. <laughs> and you had about 10 of the heaviest bands on the planet that were out there, and Lemmy doesn't give a shit, man. He's out there soaking up the rays, taking it all in. A few years ago, me and my bandmates were out doing the summer festivals, and we're in a tiny little airplane, you know, those two prop little puddle jumpers, and we're going from somewhere in Sweden to somewhere in Norway, or somewhere in Norway up to somewhere in Finland. It's like some 40 minute flight to play some obscure ice flow way up at the top of the planet. And we're waiting in this tarmac, the engine's off. This plane is like a, a, the hot box from hell. Everyone's like cooking in their clothes because someone is late getting on the plane. You're like, God, whoever's late, I'm gonna kill them. Cause we've been sitting there for like 10 minutes and everyone's just like, okay, this sucks. Cause you're roasting. And you hear something coming up the ladder, up the stairs, you know, the, the plane's kind of moving. You hear this clambering and gruff men grunting. And, and you, you smell tobacco and leather. It's Lemmy! And, and it's, it's Motorhead. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, Mickey D, it's, it's the crew, they're, they're, they're late for the flight. Okay, fair enough. So everyone's like, oh, oh, yay, all is forgiven, it's Motorhead, you know. And uh, so everyone's finding seats, and there's one seat left. Henry, hope you don't mind if I sit next to you. And you're like, and like, you know, there's one of those plates, you're like, and there's Lemmy, like, you know, I like guess. So Lemmy, um, I was wondering. And the, you know, we take off and we're flying to wherever we're going. And um, the, the nice man with his tiny cart comes through to pour the drinks. And he says to the guy, Coke, glass. Ice! And the guy lays it all out, goes by, then he looks at his manager guy, goes, the bottle! And out of a leather bag, this bottle of some brown alcohol comes out, and it is handed to him. And he corked it. This is this classic Lemmy, you know, like, not a dumb man. He looks at me as he pours some lethal amount. <laughs> You know, like, there's at least room for like four drops of Coca-Cola in this thing. And he says, I will not be betrammeled by a mere airline attendant. And I said, he said betrammeled. I, I don't know anyone who uses the word betrammeled. I mean, you know, I will not be inconvenienced, like, but he said betrammeled. Damn. COC, the first time we were on tour, we were opening, or we were playing together with a band called DRI and we were in London at the Marquee Club, which is now gone. And upstairs at the Marquee Club, there's a little bar with a little balcony or window that looks down onto the stage. I go up there, I'm fucking 19 years old, and there's Lemmy sitting at the fucking video poker machine or whatever it is. And he looks at me and goes, corrosion? I'm like, yeah, nice logo. <laughs> so the first time that I actually got to see Motorhead live was just after I joined Metallica. And so at the beginning of 87, I think it was Motorhead came into Berkeley. And so we all, in those days, were still going to shows together, dressed the same and drinking beers together and all like, you know, like in the movies, man, just like you expect it to be. And uh, so we went backstage to see Lemmy. And of course, those guys are already hip to him. He was like there. Uh, their grandfather, godfather, godfather, definitely that kind of thing. But so I go up and I'm nervous already because that's my hero, man, straight on. You know, there's three people, Geezer, Lemmy, 
and Getty Lee. And between those three, that's it. So uh, <laughs> there's there's Lemmy right there. And so I go up and say, I'm Jason Newstead playing bass with these guys. I know who you are, you cunt. Back in the 60s, we touring, <laughs> we're touring England for the first time. It's actually 1989. And we're supporting Motley Crue. And um, me and the guitar player, Snake, we're out and we go to a uh, club that I think was called a Sam Maritz. And there's nobody in this bar. There's not one person. There's zero people. And it's me and him. It's about six at night, you know, dinner hour. Me and Snake get some drinks going. Start getting loaded. There's still nobody there. And I go, fuck, man, this is cool, man. We're in London, England. But you know what would really make it killer? Like, seriously? And it goes, what? Dude, wouldn't it be insane if we saw Lemmy from Motorhead, like, in tonight at one point? He goes, well, yeah, that, that would mean we're in England, that's for sure. You know, there's no, like, imagine that, though, you know. Couple more drinks. <laughs> Snake goes, dude, who's that fucking guy over in the corner there playing video games, man? Like, like let's go play a fucking video game. We walk over, there's, there's only one other person in the bar other than us. We walk over to this video game, and who turns around? It's, it's Levy for Motorhead. It's like, just a second. Me, me and Snake go, oh my God, it's Levy! We just... My first time I ever met Lemmy, was all, it was like my, I think it was my second time in Europe ever. And I remember we were in London and Joey and I went to the Marquee to see The Suite. The Suite was playing and we were like excited to get to see them and went to the show and got really just, I was already pretty drunk. I, I, this was like I said, only my second time over there. So the stronger beer just really kicked my ass. And um, afterwards, a bunch of people were going to this club called the St. Moritz across the street from the Marquee. And, oh, you got to come. It's, it's like all the rock stars hang out there. And we're like, okay. And we go over to this, this tiny little bar, like, and if I remember correctly, you kind of walk downstairs, and there's this little bar, and there's Lemmy standing at the bar, and I was like, wow, you know, I guess it is true. You hang out in London, and you see all the famous people, you know, and, and uh, so I, I walked up to him, and, you know, some of the details are pretty hazy, but the gist of it is I, I pretty much walked up to him super excited and uh, um, offered to buy him a drink, you know, because of what would be better than having a drink with Lemmy? And the, he said something to the effect of, you're not buying me a drink, I'll buy your drink, you're in my town, you know, and it's good to meet you and all that. And um, whatever he was drinking, you know, he's, what do you have? And I said, whatever you're having. And I didn't drink whiskey or anything like that back then. I mean, it was just strictly beer, you know. And I just started drinking with him, you know, whatever he was drinking, probably Jack. And, and I was ordering beers as well because I really didn't like the taste of the whiskey. And... Uh, I tried to keep up with him because we stood and talked for a little bit and hung out and I just kept drinking with him and drinking with him and drinking with him. And the next thing I know, <laughs> uh, um, the next thing I know, I'm being carried out of the hotel by our manager the next day, um, basically puking and shitting at the same time. I had like severe alcohol poisoning and uh, we, were have, we were supposed to be flying to Amsterdam because that was the next stop on the promotional tour. And I couldn't even walk. I couldn't get out of bed. I was, I was a disgusting mess. And I, I literally, Johnny Z had to carry me over his shoulder through the airport, like every, every three minutes having to run to a garbage can, anything to throw up. Finally get on the plane. I'm like puking in the bathroom while we're taking off. It was just, it's the sickest, the worst like I've ever been in my life. And it lasted for like two days. I was just so unbelievably sick and hung over. And, and, um, cut to like a couple months later, it was April 86, and it's our first show in London with Anthrax, first time headlining in London. And Lemmy shows up, he comes walking in the dressing room, and he looks at me, he goes, how you feeling? But he totally like obviously knew, you know, because I don't remember what I was saying or doing by the end of that night. You know, I just was just gone, gone, you know, and uh, he obviously knew that I wasn't going to be feeling too well the next day. And I, I just love that that was my first experience with Le Lemmy, you know, it was like, it was like getting abducted by a pirate and then trying to become one. And I was just so not ready. We have kind of an interesting relationship. Uh, it was defined early on, an early meeting, and uh, Lemmy asked me if I wanted to 
do some wines with them or something. And uh, I said, um, I don't drink or do drugs. And I had found historically many people who party are a little bit put off by that or um, are offended because they, they've offered you something, you know, and you've, you've passed, basically, you know, and you've said no to their, to their generous offer. Uh, Lemmy's reaction was, oh, well, more for me. And uh, that was, <laughs> and we were off to the races. It was like, okay, you know, hey, I don't have to share with this guy, perfect. The song Ramones on a, on a, uh, on a tape or a CD. And then uh, we, we decided to do it, record it. And uh, I like uh, Motorhead's version better. I do. We changed one line, you know, instead of Marky uh, 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 steps on the gas or is on the gas, we say Mar Mar we said Marky takes it up the ass. So it was pretty funny. Okay, so Lemmy would be, if he wasn't in Motorhead, I guess he'd probably be the, the gynecologist. He'd have a, you know, the girl would be up in the, the woman would be up in the stirrups and he'd have a cocktail or a bottle of Jack, whatever. Um, and, and he'd be looking down there with the, you know, with the thing on and, uh, dear, I've got to, you know, I've got to numb you. you know? And she'd be concerned, what do you mean, I, you got to numb me? And he would get down there and, you know, numb, 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 numb. <laughs> And Darby Crash of The Germs was in London. He was the lead singer of The Germs, who's since passed away many years ago. He jumps on stage, right? during our set. I, but I'm good friends with Darby, so I don't care. I know he's not gonna hurt me, but Kenny doesn't know it, and Lemmy doesn't know it. They come out and start beating the shit out of him. And I'm like going, no, stop, stop, that's my friend. And, but he didn't, you know, he didn't know. He just thought it was some guy jumping up on stage. But a father figure, I guess, to all, to, to a whole generation of, of bands and musicians. But I almost think more like an uncle, like the cool uncle. Because sometimes father figures are the, the people who kind of are oppressive. Lemmy uh, lent the Blackhearts all the Motorhead gear when we, for our first uh, trip after the Runaways broke up. And we didn't have any gear and we didn't really have any means to, to tour. And they helped us with, you know, amps and PA and the whole deal and guys to help us out. And I went out to the uh, uh, Rainbow. I took my, my son, you know, and Lemmy was there. And I went up to him, I started talking, I'm going, hey man, when are, you gonna, when are you gonna ask me to play on one of your records, you know? And he goes, I'll see you Tuesday. <laughs> there was two tracks, and one of them, I wanted to kind of do something really special, you know? Um, so I got the track ahead of time, and I worked on it, and I did like these double guitars and all this dual, you know, kind of crazy stuff. And then another, so then, then Lemmy came in, and he heard it, and he got a kick out of it, you know? So I was really thrilled. And then the other song, we just had a blast, you know. He just, he just would say, "Okay, now, now do do this take here," and I would just do this, you know, crazy take, and he'd say, "Okay, now try to play a little slower," <laughs> and I'd do it again. And he'd go, "So, oh, you can't play slow, can you?" <laughs> and so I'd try hard, and I'd be able to play slow. But um, then he uh, um, would say, like, you know, try like, you know, it was just fun, you know? I mean, the first take, I think, was the one they ended up using, but it was like, you know, put your head back, close your eyes, and make believe you. And we just had, like, fun that way. So that was, that was cool. He was producing me, so to speak. He sends me this lighter, you know? <laughs> and it's, it's got, you know, Motorhead Iron Cross, first class, and it says on it, um, from Lemmy to Steve Vai, in appreciation for his fine work on Inferno, 2004. I mean, I've done a lot of gigs, a lot of sessions with a lot of cats, and you know, you get the you get the rose, you know, you get the flowers, or you get the you know the nice card, or you get the whatever. This is this is like class act, man. It's perfectly lemmy. You see that, man? <laughs> Doing the Eurorail thing, you know, eighteen-year-old kid with a backpack, riding the trains around Europe, and I was in Frankfurt, Germany, walking around, and I saw posters for a Motorhead show, and so I went got a ticket, and the show was in a suburb of Frankfurt, Frankfurt called Offenbach. Uh, took the train to the show, or to the venue, like earlier in the afternoon, and I met a guy who was a photographer from Metal Hammer, and started talking, and, and uh, he's like, yeah, you wanna come backstage after the show? And I was like, Sh sure, you know? Because at that point, I'd never really been exposed to anything like that, so it was exciting. 
So after the show, I watched Motorhead, of course, they were awesome. Uh, I went, went backstage after the show, and uh, I'm walking down the hallway to the Motorhead dressing room, and right as I turn the corner to go in, Lemmy's coming out and almost runs into me, or we almost run into each other. And at first, I was taken aback at uh, his height, because I always imagined him being this giant, and I was kind of surprised when I was taller than him. And I uh, almost run into each other, and he kind of gives me this, like, fake headbutt. And uh, I was, you know, I'm a fan, you know, kind of in awe of, whoa, it's Lemmy, right there in front of me. And uh, he had a beer in his hand, and he, he gave me the beer. He goes, here you go, mate. And at that point in my life, I didn't even drink, and I, I still don't drink beer, but it's like, <laughs> I drank that beer. It's like, Lemmy gave me a fucking beer. This is, uh, since I'm, I'm geeky like that, uh, I kept the ticket from the Offenbach show where I first met Lemmy. I uh, had to rifle through some shoe boxes to find it, but I still have it. Nice. You just want to hold it still so you can get that shot. That's so cool, man. It's got, like, the number on it. Mm -hmm. See, I wish tickets were like that. No, why the hell am I sucking? Now it's even worse mm -hmm. where it's like a printout yeah, of yeah. a barcode, yeah. you know? Yeah. All right, cool.